Hello. In this AIM video, we are going to look at the split times report. So as continuation from our assessment of um, the driving uh, of these two laps, we've done our measures graphs, uh, we've looked at GPS, we've overlaid the data um, on a lap replay, we've also looked at it on Google Earth, and all of those videos are linked um, uh, in the box below. But today we're going to have a look at being able to break the track down into sectors or segments, very similar to like you see in professional motorsports when you watch it on television and they're broken into how did you do in sector one or sector two or sector three, and be able to have a look at how to set that up uh, in the AIM Race Studio analysis. So to be able to do that, the first thing we need to do is to go back to something we learned very uh, early on in our videos, which is how to be able to uh, build a new map. And so if you remember, we went up to map and we clicked on new. And so right now we can see that this is the map that was created um, by AIM automatically with straights in green, right hand turns in, in red and left hand turns in blue. But what we want to do this time around is we want to be able to build our own um, map. And so first thing we want to be able to do is go down to these modify parts is we're going to say remove all. And now we've got a map that's got just one complete um, segment. And so that's the entire lap. So first thing we want to be able to do is break it down into segments. Now, one of the things that I like to be able to do sometimes is be able to mimic what the segments look like in my analysis with what the track is using as segments. And so this is a race from Silverstone National. It was called the Walter Hayes Trophy. And so if I actually go into the TSL timing app uh, and look at the results for um, the Walter Hayes Trophy, one of the um, sectors, uh, one of the areas or, or sections of the of the uh, results is a quick identifier as to the segments and where pit entry and pit exit and um, start finishes um, on the map. And so you can see that that's here. So what we're going to do is we're going to probably mimic these as close as we can get. Now, they might not be identical to the timing that comes through, but at the same time, it's going to give you a clear enough indication as to ballpark as to how you're doing in these particular areas. So we're going to go just before Maggots here and we're going to go just before Brooklyn with our segments. And so we're going to go back to the map and this is exactly where they were previously. And so what we're going to do is we're going to stop just about here for our first segment. So we're going to put the cursor there. Now, one of the things that's really important that we do is that we always break the track up on a straightaway uh, and not in a braking zone. And we can see that um, here by this is the braking zone as the speed decreases. We do not want to um, create a segment um, based upon areas where individuals are braking because that could vary. We want there to be some element of consistency on every lap. And so that's always on a straightaway um, rather than in braking zones that can vary uh, quite considerably. So we're, we're on a straightaway here, just coming up for the braking. And so we're going to click on divide. And so that's going to create the first segment that is there. The second that we looked at was as we were coming down into Brooklyn. So again, if we follow the cursor here, we don't want to be in a braking zone. So we're going to say just before that, and we're going to click on divide again. Now, one of the things you may have noticed is that what's happened is um, we've got two reds and a green. Well, that doesn't matter because we can actually just fool the system by saying red. We can make that uh, a straightaway, a corner one, uh, a corner two. Interestingly, the software has always done this that even though it represents a straight and the auto generated, when you're clicking through these buttons, it's as a straight as blue. That's just normal. So you could have blue, red and green if you wanted. And that's absolutely fantastic if you've got a three segment lap and that's what we're going to do today. But if you've got multiples, you can do any kind of variation because those segment colors here will also be represented up here as we look at it. The only downside of not representing them as corners is that you will lose these corner indicators that are here. But we arguably don't need that for this uh, this um, uh, measure, and so we're just going to ignore that for now. Then we're going to go in and name it, and we're going to say uh, Silverstone National again. But we're going to put down um, three segments, or you could say sectors. Let's say sectors for, for uh, purposes of this demonstration. I'm going to click on Save Now. And so now what we've got is we've got three sectors that have been created uh, on the map as we look at it. So. Very useful to be able to have that piece of information, but it means that we can now open and enable another feature uh, in the AIM Rose Studio Analysis software, which is called Split Report. So if I get the mouse and I scroll up to the top here, you notice that we've got this box here, which is called Split Time Report. If I click on that lap now, what it's going to do is it's going to show me all of the laps for, this, for the test that I have open. 
Uh, we can still see the consistency in the laps that we're looking at. We can see lap eight uh, and lap 12, those two laps that we chose to be able to analyze in the first place. Uh, but what it's also going to do is it's going to represent those three segments that we just created, those three sectors. So if I open those up a little bit by clicking here, it makes it easier for us to be able to sort of start looking at that data in those segments. So now what you're seeing is you are seeing the lap broken down into those three segments and then the time for each of those segments per lap. So you can see that for segment number one, it's around a 14 second or so segment. For sector two, it's around 21, 22 seconds. And for sector three, it's around 29 seconds or so. And all of those accumulated together gives you your lap time. The second thing we're gonna have a look at is as we look on here um, overall, we look at um, other aspects of the lap as well. So it's gonna highlight the red, uh, these red sections are your fastest sectors. So what was interesting is on the fastest lap of the entire session, not a single one of those uh, sectors was the fastest done in that session across those three. And so what that means it's going to do is it's also going to do one additional feature, which is going to be able to say, if I took those three segments and I stuck those together in terms of my best for segment one, best for segment two, and best for segment number three, then I can see what my theoretical best lap would be. Now, the reason we like doing this with fewer segments is that if you do all the right-hand turns and the left-hand turns, and then you go to some tracks, um, if you're in the UK, for example, you go to Alton Park. If you're in the US, you go to somewhere like uh, Circuit of the Americas, where there are 17 or 20 corners. It's very difficult to remember everything you were doing in those particular segments. But if you break it down into bite-sized pieces of three areas that you know, okay, I've got to work on sector number one, and the analysis I've looked at on the GPS line and the measures graph has helped me understand my inputs and what I need to do differently there, it helps be able to identify. And so uh, this is a very good way of being able to analyze the data and be able to spot trends. The other thing it allows you to be able to do is to be able to reduce errors on one lap assessment. If we go back to the measures graph, the issue that we often have in this particular analysis is that this is one lap versus another lap, but it doesn't necessarily take into account variables that may have happened um, that weren't necessarily just driver input. There may have been other cars around you, which may have resulted in you changing your line, um, and may have resulted in um, you taking an alternative braking pattern or something along those lines. So the split report gives you the opportunity of being able to look at your performance over time and be able to assess how well um, you know, you're know you doing in certain areas. And so what they also do is to be able to identify um, how well um, you're doing in each of those sections in terms of the deviation of lap time against fastest or slowest. And so it's interesting that as we look at that as well, we can start seeing that um, you know there's 0.3 um, deviation here, but there's 0.5 and 1.1 here. So that means that there's a lot of time to be gained and lost through sector number one in terms of variation of the lap time to say that's a key area to be able to focus on uh, as well. So a lot of really useful information that's available here. You also have one last feature that's in yellow, and that yellow represents the best rolling lap, which is sometimes um, because we're so far apart with this lap here versus this lap, this lap in terms of um, piecing together the best sectors, what it will also do is to be able to demonstrate to you, um, even if it wasn't all on the same lap, which three segments combined together is your best rolling lap. So it's the end of uh, lap 12, which was the reference lap, was the best of the rolling laps if connected together with um, uh, this first sector of lap 13 and second sector of lap 13. In fact, the second sector of lap 13 was the fastest of the whole session, which is where you'd have, you know, where the, the, t the speed would have been gained. However, it was lost uh, by three tenths here. Uh, and so it wasn't the fastest rolling lap. And so you can see that the fastest uh, rolling lap would have been a 105.5, uh, the theoretical 105.3 and the actual 105.6 across those three segments. So a lot to be learned from this particular feature because it allows you to be able to start digging into where you've got the opportunity to be able to gain or lose the most amount of time look for consistency and figure out where you're going. So if we just recap this session uh, and this video just a little bit, first thing is, is we're in the measures graph uh, and we changed our map by going up to the map here and clicking on new. 
interestingly, if you want to go back to the previous view um, with fewer segments, you can always go into Map Manager. You can go to Silverson National as it is and just click for load for open tests. And it goes back to how it was before with the lefts and the rights. And for many, split time analysis isn't just looking at sectors. It could be looking at all sorts of different variables, like let's aggregate all of our right-hand turns together and see what's consistent there or our braking zones or whatever need be. Good for car setup and a few other variables. Um, then we went into, um, let's load that other one back up. So let's go back to Map Manager. We'll go back to Silverstone three sectors, load for the open tests. Then we went to the split report, which always closes them down again. So we're going to open them up. And that just gives us an idea in terms of across that lap against the segments that were there. What was our fastest opportunity? Where are we consistent? Where do we have the opportunity to be able to do uh, the best performance that we can? And so hopefully this is useful to you. Um, we'll probably analyze this in a little bit more detail, looking at trends in driving later on. So that's it for this video. Please give it a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. Please also leave a comment below if you want to let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. There's a lot more content to come. Thanks for watching.